delighted to introduce Dr. Heidi Honegger Rogers, um, who is the director of the University of New Mexico Health Sciences Center Interprofessional Education Program, associate professor of the UNM College of Nursing um, and uh, UNM College of Nursing Center for Health Equity, uh, Planetary Health and Preparedness, and also the UNM Accelerating Resilience in Drylands Institute. You are a busy, busy person. <laughs> 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 and um, today she'll be presenting about integrating active hope and that the work that reconnects interplanetary health education. I am so pleased to be here. Um, I, I teach in the College of Nursing and I have the um, honor really of facilitating learning environments for the next generation of health professional leaders at the University of New Mexico, which is located on the traditional homelands of the Tewa and Public Peoples, um, which is also where I live. And, um, and in nursing, and, and in healthcare, but with, uh, in nursing, we talk about teaching for the head, the heart, and the hands. And, um, and for me, I'm thrilled to be presenting on some recent work that I've been doing to try to bring a little more heart into the teaching that I'm doing around climate change, planetary health, environmental degradation, all the adverse impacts of the Anthropocene on our health and well-being um, in ways that will help to connect and move uh, the, the students that I really have an honor to, to be with at, at, at the U. So um, here are my objectives for today to connect our work as planetary health educators in what our students are experiencing in the world. Um, to describe the work of Joanna Macy, or my story of Joanna Macy's work and, and Active Hope. To introduce uh, the work that reconnects and discuss strategies of moving with students through this viral journey and reviewing the importance of facilitating an imaginative, connected community of leaders through our work in education. All right, we've seen this slide now twice, um, but I just want to say, um, for me, from the faculty perspective, um, most of my students are the, um, again, I don't own them, most of the students that I have an honor to be with in learning environments were born between 2001 and 2006. Um, by the time they were, you know, three, we had crossed three boundaries. By the time they were 10 or 12, depending, we had crossed four planetary boundaries. Um, last year, we, we crossed six boundaries. This is in half a lifetime of the youth. Um, the amount of change that has happened in the world is really significant. And you can't underestimate how people are feeling. Uh, we've all just had an opportunity to really listen and move with Judy Wu's work um, around climate grief and, and our youth. And um, we've got a lot of people in this room that I've had an opportunity to talk with that are, that are really understanding sort of what is happening um, with our students, particularly in the United States and in, in, um, in Canada, I'm guessing, as well. So those are our students. And sometimes this is what is happening, right? This uh, photo from the Creative Commons um, is um, really something that um, I know I've experienced in my lifetime, and I've definitely seen the, um, the folks that I'm working with in learning environments um, feel like. So um, I want to talk to you about Joanna Macy. Who knows Joanna Macy's work? Yeah, it's interesting because in environmental health, everyone, almost everyone knows Joanna's Macy work, jo Joanna Macy's work. But in healthcare settings, we haven't had that opportunity to really move with her work all that much. Um, she is in her mid-90s at this point. Um, she's been working at the intersection of environmental justice and social justice and injustice in the U.S. and Northern California for most of her career. She's actually one of the first people that translated Rainier Maria Rilke's poems into English. Um, so she started out as a scholar, um, as a philosopher, moved into the work of deep ecology, and through her experiences over time, working first with 
with nuclear um, proliferation and the anxieties around that that was happening in the, well, c continues to happen, um, but in the 60s and 70s in the US, um, really moving with communities that were witnessing and on the front lines of multiple injustices, she found that that work was really about, um, or the work for her, what her calling, or this is my version of her story, um, was really about how do we how do we hold each other together in community when we're working on things that are really hard, right? um, working on things that are potentially super devastating, and and an idea of how do we keep us all engaged in this work, and so um, you know of all the dangers we face from climate chaos to nuclear war. None is so great as the deadening of our response, right? None is so great. So. Um, one of the tools that Joanna Macy and her community have come up with is something that's a part of this, this community called the work that reconnects. This is the spiral journey, and, um, and it actually had a couple of other images, but they were so big, and I had to send this by email, so you only get the one half. But, but I love dandelions, and it's, um, dandelions are these really amazing, resilient um, flowers. So just imagining and channeling the spirit of the, of the dandelion as we walk through uh, the spiral journey. So this is a path for reconnection. So this is a, this is a toolkit. Um, there are, there's multiple books, and I'll give you some resources at the end, on how to help um, ourselves walk through this path of, of moving in, in spaces that are really overwhelming um, out into actually um, being able to walk with the work that we need to walk with in all of the nooks and crannies of everything that we're doing. So it's grounded in gratitude. These are the roots, um, the leaves, and the and a lot of the plant is really about recognizing and honoring our pain and our grief, which is a process that I'll explain in a minute. Um, using our experiences, our connection, our communities to really um, gain new and different perspectives that help us actually go forth in the work that we want to um, move with as we are progressing along. Um, to start the story, it is important to, um, to the Macy community to really um, ground people in a period of time. So these are, this is actually slides that I work with Dr. Astle and Dr. Potter with. This idea of like, where are we? And, um, and I really like this image because what we're talking about here, I might have a laser, but I don't know how to use it. Um, but what we're talking about here is, here we are, we're, we're at a place in time where we have um, made human decisions. We've, um, some of the decisions are really not sustainable or just. We those systems that are coming down. There's there's these pieces that are unraveling. So this we've had this business as usual. We're experiencing a little bit of the unraveling, and at the same time, we're moving into um, what the planetary health community calls the great transition. What the Macy community calls the great turning. Um, and and you know it's just this idea that. We're actually moving into these emergent systems. So, um, so the work that I'm doing is talking about where are we in time and what are we trying to do. Um, so you have to ground it in business as usual, the great unraveling and the great turning when you're working with with students or working with each other. So um, the work um, that I've been doing with students it has been around how do we integrate into our classrooms very non-traditional ways of connecting around what we're studying, right? So, so I, um, I teach three classes that I have this, this work in. Um, probably the most significant way that I've been able to use this is in an online, asynchronous, variable credit, grad, undergrad course, where students are coming in from multiple disciplines, multiple knowledges, multiple new knowledges and unknowing. And, um, and so we, we have little assignments, we call them mini assignments, where we're talking through what are we, what are we thankful for? 
Um, how do we honor our pain? This is probably the biggest and most important part of our um, spiral journey and just knowing, um, just acknowledging and holding that there is pain. Um, we move with systems thinking and complexity and sharing stories and narratives to think about new ways of seeing. And then we set intentions and move with how are we going to pull what we're learning into what we want to be doing um, in, in, our, in our nooks and crannies of our various professions. Um, I also work with the deep adaptation model, which I really uh, like that Jen Mendel came up with in 2018 about how do we start to narrate what we want to do and how we hold on to our um, what we care about and how do we let go of the things that we don't need. And um, this is from a recent trip with Dr. Astle and Dr. Potter to Cuba. And I just want to leave you with this. Heart path. Um, this is uh, just a really neat um, artist in Cuba. So, just how are we helping people walk or, or ride their bikes along their heart path? And um, references. And then I will leave you with this. This is a whole resource page on the work that reconnects um, and the work of Active Hope and the community that is doing this work um, uh, in education. I'll just say I appreciate the opportunity to bring some new work that I'm moving with. I've had really great conversations with several of you in the room about, um, yeah, your experiences. Go ahead, Zach. This is a very, very specific question. Right? Yeah. Your production mentioned the next undergrad grad. Yeah. That just sounds really neat. Could you speak? Yeah, for sure. Grad, undergrad, variable credit across multiple disciplines on two campuses. So we have nursing students, we have anthropology PhD students, we have undergrad engineering students and communication students, community and regional planning, um, all of the other health professions, population health, take a asynchronous elective credit. I'm super happy to share the model with people that actually published on it. Um, how we are bringing in people for elective. So as the Interprofessional Education Program Director, we have interprofessional education electives that students can take for IPE honors. Um, and it's really cool because then we get people you know, play together, even though it's asynchronous, because there's absolutely no way you can get people together on a Tuesday and Thursday, right? Like, it has to be in these discussion spaces, but we really, um, I have a, with, there's a PhD student that I work with who is a learning designer who designed that course, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a it's a pretty cool model. Yeah, so we're happy to share about that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much.